Did you know that an egg loses nutritional value every week by 1%? Well, an egg is not meant to simply be eaten but enjoyed. And this is something that Musinji Farm understood when they set out to produce quality antibiotics-free yellow yolked eggs. Musinji started with only 200 buds and right now they are on track to start adding value to their eggs after winning seed funding from the NSSF High Innovator Challenge of 20,000 US dollars. Musinji is a Swahili word that means foundation and true to their name, part of their operations is training they provide to outgrower farmers with the goal of onboarding more people. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Nkumbi Telimba as we meet Mr. and Mrs. Kabugo, the founders of the farm. Together, let's learn how they manage to produce quality, fresh, yellow yolked eggs. Thank you so much for joining us today on Nkumbi Telimba. We are visiting yet another farmer. Thank you so much. You are very, very welcome to Musinji Poultry. We are so excited to have you this morning. Uh, my name is Peace Kabugo and uh, I run Musinji Poultry together with my partner Julius Raymond Kabugo, with whom we started Musinji Poultry in September 2018. My name is Julius Raymond Kabugo. I'm a poultry farmer. I'm an agribusinessman. I lead Musinji Poultry Limited, a farm that is implementing an outgrower's system or model for farmers. So you're welcome to this uh, production house. This is where we bring the birds after they've been brooding for about five months, about 20, 21 weeks. We bring them here and, they, and this is where we expect them to start laying the eggs. How has the journey been so far? Opening up our doors, that was 2018, December with 200 birds, broilers, why broilers? Because I needed to test the system of brooding. One of the most complicated things, functions, uh, of managing in poultry business is brooding the chick from day one to around 10 weeks when it's now mature enough to sustain its life and eventually moving on to doing what you want it to do. We hit a net profit margin of about 150%. It was very, very wow. exciting. So after that, we told ourselves we are going big and uh, that gave us a uh, kind of a base from where to start. Today we have 3,500 birds and we have an output of about 83 trays per day average. We have so many people who are doing chicken farming. What makes Mosinji farm different? Uh, one of the things that make us unique as a farm is um, we focus on the health of the bird. We make sure our bird is healthy because we believe if the bird is healthy, it's going to give you a, a healthy egg, if I may put it that way. So what happens at Musinji, every morning the farm opens at 4 a.m. And when it opens, the first things they do, of course after going through disinfection, the workers themselves, they disinfect themselves, then they get in. Before they touch anything, before they do anything, they walk around, they take a sweep around the whole house. They are observing to see if the birds are alive, if the birds are in, and uh, what has changed since last night. So we've managed through that kind of hygiene to eliminate diseases of our farm. Apart from vaccination, I don't remember the last time we bought antibiotics. Actually, the last time we did is when, in the same day, I learned that they are very, very, very harmful to human health. Because we had a disease and the doctor came, and recommended us to buy them. So when I bought, I was very curious. I read on the bottle, and there was a writing that says, a precaution actually, that when you apply this medicine, the eggs that are going to be laid over the next four to seven days, don't feed them to people. And I'm like, who does that in Uganda? Does anyone do it? The doctor says, no one does it. They still take it to the market. I said, I can't kill people. How can I avoid this? He said, just be hygienic, just do the right things, just clean your environment. Just disinfect your environment, you won't have diseases on your farm. And as a result, we've managed to keep diseases away. We know that for sure the quality of the egg that we produce is not easily found. 
if you eat the msinji egg, you will know that you've eaten something different. You can even boil it and eat it without salt because it has all the nutrients that the egg should have. And that is why the yolk is yellow. Basically, the color indicator of yellow in food is an indicator of a lot of uh, nutrients and minerals and vitamins. There's a chance that you lose pan of control, but we want our birds to be in sight all the time. Each bird should get an opportunity to be taken care of, to be checked, to be looked after, to make sure that it has had feed, it has taken water, uh, if in the case we identify any problem, we isolate it and attend to it before it goes back to the production unit uh, for production. They must be in very, very, very good environments, very clean environments, very hygienic environments. For example, where they feed from, the feed trays, we clean it twice a day. In the morning before they feed, we disinfect it. We don't want our bag to be exposed to any kind of uh, bacteria, virus, nothing. Why, why that journey of farming and not, because you could have opted for uh, maybe matoke, growing matoke, why chicken? So in 2015, um, I took maternity leave from my workplace and after I had my baby, I went back to work and unfortunately the job was no longer available. The job uh, market has become smaller and I was wondering what to do, but I also had space at home. So I spoke to my husband and I told him, why don't we do a small chicken project here, you know? In my mind, I was just looking at um, increasing our household income. But when we sat down uh, to do the maths, we realized that uh, for it to be actually profitable and for us to enjoy from it, we needed at least 200 birds. We set up a structure of 200 birds and that's how we started. Could you walk us through what is required to start a chicken farm? The two major systems that are so critical to our business uh, for us is operations, because operations day to day, from 4 a.m. All our farms, by 4 a.m. they are up and running, everywhere you are. And when you wake up, we have defined exactly what you do. You come at the farm, you're disinfected, you put on your uniform, you put on lights, you go to, to, to the farm, you first walk on the farm to make sure all birds are okay, you pray. If you are an employee, pray about the, today's work and the farm, pray for the birds. Then after, start the cleaning, clean the feed trays, clean the environment, serve the birds their feed, uh, clean the water system, confirm that there is water flowing on all uh, nipples for each and every bird. You have to check that. If that is fine, then you're done. Clean, because in the process of serving, there's some little kind of dirt spill over here and there. Clean them up. When you're done, lock the house, come out, sit near the farm and wait and see. If there's anything that needs to be served to the birds, go back and serve it. If you found a bird that perhaps had a problem, maybe died or something, there's another procedure that you perform on such a bird. You open it up, you try to confirm what happened, you call the doctor or take a photo of that bird and put it on the group where the doctor is so that he can talk to us about what the problem could be. So that is, all of them are documented. But that one is the most important because it guides the day-to-day -day management of our farms and all the farmers have adopted. So I think for anyone who is going to do a chicken business, one of the things that they need to have in mind is you're dealing with life. For a certain time you're going to put in some money, it is not instant money. Uh, you need to have space for it, follow guidelines from your supplier of the day-old chicks. And, and they will make it. We have a manual in that even you, if you came to the farm and you said, today I've come to work on the farm. If we give you a manual, you'll be able to work on the farm. Because everything is there. Every person on the farm is aware of what is happening on the farm. They can observe and interpret and intervene. I believe that it's not just eggs that you are dealing with here. What mm. other byproducts do you have coming out of Msinji farm? So in order for us to position ourselves for export, we have decided to venture into um, powdery eggs because we believe that it will give us some kind of speed but also make it easier for us to move these goods. But at the same time, powdered eggs give us a shelf life of five to 10 years, which the liquid eggs cannot. Yeah, we have biogas that is being locally harvested. I think you saw the biogas plant yes. up there. So, we get some of the chicken waste, use it for biogas, and we are using it to cook clean energy. 
as you can see, the manure is covered in sawdust. We cover the manure in sawdust because one, sawdust is highly absorbent, but it also helps to extract ammonia from the chicken waste. When there are high concentrations of ammonia in the house, it affects the well-being of the birds. So like I told you, when we collect the manure from the production house, we bring it to this locally made solar dryer system. The manure should last two to three days in the solar dryer. So we are not in a hurry to pack it because it's not smelling, it's safe, it's not getting any more wet, but uh, it's drying in there. We pack it in sacks and, and we take it to them. They either pick it up or they take it to them. And this manure here, has been packed ready for pickup by a customer who needs it. Tell us about the market for eggs. Uh, what, how much is Musinji Farm producing at the moment? And how are you able to meet, um, to meet your cu customers' need uh, consistently? Ideally, every Uganda is, is a, a customer, eats eggs and buys eggs. However, our particular niche is going into bakeries, uh, fortified foods, uh, snack makers, and, and that is where we are going. Right now in Sinji, that is where, where our niche is, because we've seen that these are the, the people who are willing to buy the egg for its quality. We currently have a demand of about 1,500 trays a week. Th that is how much we are putting out in the market. But at Musinji alone, you've seen that we produce about 83 trays a day which is about 530 trays a week. And your question is, how are you meeting the demand of yes. 1,500 yes. trays? Uh, one of the reasons we, we call ourselves Musinji is we believe, we believe that we are going to set a foundation of a lot of farmers to, to, to do the right thing in poultry management. We are a center of excellence, and then we invite others to come and learn from us and then they plant farmers. Uh, they plant other farms, they start other farms. To date, we've helped over 30 farms to start. We are working with uh, around 14 directly to help others to become better in farming and farm management practices. We have farms in Mkumba. We have another farm in Fort Potro. We have a farm here in Mawanda Road, uh, in Kampala, um, and so many others. I'm Miria Kaita, married to Deo Kaita, and this is Intuitive Poultry Farm located on off Mawanda Road in Kamocha. I saw Mr. Kabugo on Business Garage, so I inquired about how I can get to him. He invited me into his space to see. Uh, and then he connected me to different people, different service providers of water, that, um, building this, and the ordering the chicks. Uh, connected me to the person giving us feeds. So the journey has been so smooth and interesting. These farmers are working together to meet that weekly product, uh, demand of 1,500 trays a day. Same quality, if you ate those eggs, if you found them anywhere, you would not know that they are not from here, but we are working with them to meet our demand. The lady at Manda Road recently brooded birds and lost almost none. And I immediately uh, declared her farm a center of excellence for brooding. So if you come me about brooding, I don't start anything, I know. She's a star, so I send you there. I have a, another farm in Nkumba, another lady, who has mastered the finances. She's not an accountant, but she has mastered the, the finances. And I've also told her that now you're going to be the one teaching others on financial management. So I'm starting to pick up different individuals coming out strongly on different systems and functions. And now that means that it's going to be easier for us to help everyone else in this system without necessarily looking at me as the only person teaching all the stuff I have here. So I can teach you everything you change from another farm because we have successfully replicated it there. Every time he's checking on me, 
every question, I, every challenge I get, I call him. He's reachable anytime, even at night I call him, this has happened, so what should I do? So some of the farmers we are working with are farmers who have been frustrated before. We have very few, we have three farmers in the network who have just come on board. But most farmers have come out, have reached out to us out of frustrations, which I believe are everywhere. So, and that is how we are getting the people on board. You can come to us and say, I want to start this business and I want to work with you. We, we, we have MOUs, different MOUs for different circumstances. Have you been able to ensure that when farmers come here, when they learn, they actually put into effect whatever you're teaching them? We do not get into an agreement with you unless we have trained your workers for a minimum of a month. Your workers come and they live with us, they stay with us for two months, running the farm, waking up at four, until we are convinced that this person is self-led, has understood, we release the person to go to your farm. You cannot buy your own feed. In fact, to make sure that we, you're taking the same feed as we do, we order the feed and we deliver it ourselves to your farm. So if in a week you're not ordering for feed, we are thinking, what's going on with you? Currently, how many employees do you have on Osinje farm? Between us, we employ uh, now 25 people. Um, we have just added another person who is going to be deployed in Fort Potro. So we have 25 younger people. All of them are younger people under the age of uh, uh, 30 who we are engaging to work uh, on these farms. So when we get new staff, we go through the manuals together of uh, what happens, depending on the phase at which they, they, they come in. I want to use this passion to not just for my own gain, but I want to especially confront the social challenges, the social problems that people face. One of them is uh, unemployment in our country. Paint for us a picture of Musinji farm two, three, five years from now. We are looking at a production of about two million trees a day by the end of 2025. We want to get into manufacturing of cosmetics and uh, egg-based products really at the end of, by the end of 2025. Normally, when we talk about quality in Uganda, it's related with coming from outside. But today, we have proven that it can be done here. And one of our key takeaways has been that when you take good care of the birds, quality fresh eggs are guaranteed. Thank you for watching Nkumbi Telimba.